Previously on The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 3. Ellie and Joel find Bill and Frank's suburban paradise. They loot it for whatever supplies they need, and they get a car, uh, a pickup truck, and they can go out west now to find Joel's cousin. Fuck! <laughs> Joel's cousin. We, we can find Joel's brother, Tommy, out west somewhere in Wyoming. They're going to take Ellie out there so that she can be a medical miracle. Ellie hides a gun in her backpack. We're expecting up to 10 plus one rounds and she gets her first car ride. First car ride is first. It's a great time. Yeah. I guess we're going to count the rounds in the 10 plus one is what? 10 in the magazine and one in the chamber. Yep. That's the maximum number of rounds she could have. Okay. Uh, for this episode, episode four, that is, uh, I really enjoyed this episode. Joel and Ellie on the road, solving problems, felt great. And I couldn't believe they got all the way to Kansas City already, unreal. Yeah, I was like, whoa, they're really far. Um, mm. I loved Ellie's new jokes from the ridiculous book. <laughs> Classic jokes. It was fun. Um, I wanted to see, wait, what is this? I wanted to see the issues they encountered on the road to Kansas, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so I wanted to. See, I also wanted to see more issues on the road to Kansas City. It's just kind of they were in Boston and now they're in Kansas City. You know that is a long trip, and they probably had lots of issues from Boston to Kansas City. I wanted to see it, but I guess we didn't get to see it. Hmm. Uh, and also the emotion they showed after the battle whew, got me. Got me. Yes, I also very much enjoyed this episode. I, I really liked that Joel, we, we got to see Joel sharing some of his survival wisdom. For example, in siphoning fuel or, or identifying an ambush uh, and knowing that just people would be dangerous. This felt very, I don't know, fatherly to me. It, it, you really, we also see that Joel opens up twice to protect Ellie once that once, I mean, in, protect Ellie not only physically but emotionally. We, we really see him being what would be a very good father. Ellie, somewhere in, along the way here, she pre-executes a guy. She like she halfway executes him and Joel cleans it up. And Ellie makes dad jokes all along this journey. Honestly, she mm -hmm. would be a very good companion, like a very good mm -hmm. cross-country tour uh, trip. Like, yeah, I'd be down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although there was a time where she snapped at Joel a little immaturely, I thought. But... You know, she's 14, so makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So. Teenage years are difficult, even in good times. Like That's right, yeah. Cut her some slack. Yeah. And she's like the chosen one. She's got the world of the weight on her back, chosen by like random genetics that makes her immune to stuff. But uh, that's a lot of stress. Do you think she's the only one in the world immune? I would imagine there's probably lots of people who are immune. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I guess that question is really a question of statistics about how many people are going to be likely to create this this um, genetic permutation to become immune. And it could happen again. So she may not be the world resting on her shoulders, but at least for now. Well, as far as, as, far as I understand, like genetic permutation could already be present in many people. It doesn't have to be a spontaneous mutation, you know. Right. She, she could genotypically have the mute or other people could genotypically have the, the, the combination, but they may not be expressing it phenotypically. They may not show it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, possible. So like with diseases and infections in the real world, you know, today's world, many people can get sick, but there will often be a small percentage of the population that doesn't get sick for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. So. So I suspect she's not the only one. It's just the only one we know of in the confined story we oh, have. That's right. So so for example, we'll we'll do like like um what is it? Canker sore? No, canker sores, cold sores. So mm -hmm. cold sores a lot of people could have the the herpes virus, but they just don't show it. So there there actually could be people inside the Fedra camps that are also immune. They just aren't bitten and then healed so you they don't know you don't you, we don't know that they're actually immune that's right yeah possible and then there's like china and africa and india sure. and sure. europe they could also have you know immune people we just don't know that's right global communications that likely just, shut down they should just text each other and find out yeah i wonder how long would satellites be operational like how long would these networks be working i think not long not long oh well, because we still need the ground stuff to support it and ground yeah. has been messed up and I wonder how much troubleshooting from the ground is done to satellites, how much maintenance is required. I would say significant amounts. 
maybe the orbit won't decay, but you know, I don't know. I know. Either way, let's get in the episode. Season one, episode four. Let's do it. Woo. We start out early in this this episode with Ellie. She's the, practicing her gun skills, making her tough face. Does she does she really think this is intimidating? Uh, I mean, it looks scary. I mean, yeah. I mean, the answer is yes. Is <laughs> I don't care if it's a kid. Someone's pointing a gun at you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's yeah, like me- mesmerized by the bullet. Mesmerized by the bullet. Yeah, I mean, if I saw this looking at me, I'd be like, "This this is a killer's eyes." That's right. <laughs> No, I'd be like, no, she's a child. It's okay. She won't hurt yeah. anybody. No, no, she, she has a gun. She's got a gun. She's got a gun. Yeah, it was a cool, kind of scary, kind of cute scene. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. That has to me. <laughs> so note here, there are two hoses. There are two. So, so you could do it with one hose, but you would have to. Okay, first, first I guess our goal is the siphon effect. So we need the hose, which is going to pull gasoline out to be fully full of liquid because liquids are incompressible. If you can get the liquid flowing, it'll suck more liquid out along with it. If you get an air bubble in there, then the air bubble expands, it shuts it down. So what people used to, you would suck liquid into your mouth, spit out some liquid. And then, and then now that the tube is full, you put it in your gas can. What Joel here did was super smart, super clever. I've never seen this before, but it, it, it's brilliant. So he puts in a second hose. So that way he can expel air into the gas tank to pressurize it. He shoves a cloth around the two hoses to seal it. So that way the air can't come out. And so when he pushes air through the black hose, it pressurizes the tank and it forces enough liquid through the clear to- hose that you can then start a suction, that siphon effect. There it is. Yeah, very cool. Good explanation. Very clever. Super yeah. smart. I love it. Yeah, and then you don't get like the gas in your mouth. In your mouth, you do, yep. you create In your the, lungs. Uh, yeah. you, do, you create the delta pressure through suction. Here he's creating mm-hmm. the delta pressure by adding pressure to the top of the tank. By- by pushing out no f- chemicals inside his body. Very right. clever. Very clever. Yeah. The question was, he mentioned while he was doing the siphoning, he was like, gasoline degrades. And it's my understanding that gasoline degrades, you know, year on the six months to year time scales, it's starting to degrade to the point where you can't use it anymore. However, you know, that's just a rate. Maybe there is some usable gasoline, you know, available. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, over time but i imagine after 20 years the amount of available gasoline in a gas tank is diminishing to zero rapidly i guess my follow-on questions are is when it degrades what happens because the way he said it it sounds like when gasoline degrades it turns into water now i don't know if that's true uh, i don't know how it degrades but um yeah if it does degrade into water that means that he would end up with a layer of gasoline on top of water and he'd have to figure out some way to either only extract the gasoline or to separate it. Um, otherwise, he's going to put water slash gasoline into his truck. And if you've ever had this before, it, it just sucks down combustion. Right. So maybe if, if it is water on the bottom with a layer of gasoline on top, he siphons from the bottom of the tank and watches for color Ooh. change and then sticks it into the gas. That's smart. That's super smart. Tank. Yeah. But I don't, I, my intuition is telling me none of this gas would ever be usable after 20 years. Oh yeah. After 20 years, you know? Yeah. So the yeah. gas has been sitting around in degrading, leaking. Plus vehicles. if there's any water, if there was water in the gas tank and it's been sitting around like that, that'll rust the bottom of the gas tank. Mm-hmm. So he could potentially pick up a rust into his, his new car. Hmm. Risky. Yeah, I think it's just not. If anybody knows about this, uh, let us know in the comments because it just seems to me it felt like 20 years is just too long to be siphoning gas out of gas tanks, Mm -hmm. but could be wrong. I mean, I wonder if you could make a fairly large production process of taking dirty fuel and centrifuging or even just just distilling and then putting some ethanol on top to vaporize some stuff. I don't know, maybe, maybe. I mean, at that point, you might as well start a fermentation process on a large scale and get ethanol instead mm-hmm. of trying to go around and get little itty bits of, you know, gasoline from tanks. Right. Hmm. 
you imagine in the background someone that's like a Tesla driver just like I'm cool <laughs> just like I retrofitted my Tesla to have like solar panels I just have to charge for a while like, heck yeah but I think those those batteries have a lifetime as well and they will not that's true. continue forever yeah eventually the uh, the electrolytes will break down yeah and every recharging charging cycle is never perfect mm, there's a memory so, effect yeah you know like the lithium ion batteries are really good at that but it's not forever. Mm. Plus, those have controller problems, and yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. the battery just doesn't sit on its own. Like you need a chip to control it. That's right. Yeah. Oh, so this bridge, um, I knew I'd been across this bridge. I was like, I know where this bridge is. Really? Yeah. Oh, so I cool. was like, I know where this is, and it's in Wheeling, West Virginia. What the fuck, dude? Why do you know this? Because I've I've gone across that bridge. A bunch of times i had the same thought i was like i wonder if i've ever been across this bridge and i was like uh no but i, I and see if you agree with me so i'll go to google maps here oh my gosh this is it this wait too, this, too soon too soon, too soon. <laughs> so this is okay that's stupinville we want to get to wheeling ah, stupinville and this bridge right here the vet vietnam veterans memorial bridge i knew i'd been across it so if we go if we go here sit on the bridge Fuck off. No way. This is okay. Let's Holy actually go shit. a little bit this way. Okay. Actually, we want to go to the other side of the road, which I'm going to zoom in to do. This side of the road. Okay. And we're looking this direction. See this tower over here? I see a tower. Yeah. That's that tower. See these and boats? I see here? the onion and the spheres. Yeah. The onion and the spheres and the boats. Holy there they shit. are. Holy shit. And so we're looking, if we go back, so this is the bridge, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're, this is the bridge. We're sitting somewhere like hovering over here, looking this direction. Looking south, okay. Yeah. So here's the, wow. the tower somewhere over here. And we're looking down the Ohio River. Oh, and, and the, the, the onion and the spheres of the wastewater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holy cow, dude, you're brain what the heck <laughs> I, just, I just knew it i was like that's wheeling <laughs> that's wheeling <laughs> so yeah that was cool and i was like then you go to google maps awesome. you look where are they on the way you can figure oh. out what what path they took here's boston they went through pittsburgh maybe columbus so if we go back to the map can we get a, a track yeah perfect Actually, where do i think they're going 70. so for some reason they decided to go s from boston took some freeways to 70, maybe to 80, and then down to 70, and then 70, 70 well, through St. Louis. That, you said that City. they're down in West Virginia, so we need to go even further south. Well, no, so Wheeling is actually right here. It's in this oh. weird section here. Wait, which state is that in? That's West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia it's... has this strange shape. Oh, okay. Today so it's not down here in the, the big bulbous part. It's up here. Oh. So they're taking 70. They go through Columbus, Indianapolis, St. Louis, all the way to Kansas City. Kansas City. Which, if you're going to Wyoming, I don't know why you wouldn't take 80 or maybe even 90 to Wyoming. So they're down here in Kansas City. So they're, they're a little south. Hmm. So hmm. anyway, hmm. that was interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's some more. I don't know how this happened. This is just a random side of the road thing. Somehow army trucks broke down somewhere on the side of the highway. Don't know how that happened. To me, it read like they had ran out of fuel or something. So they had to abandon the vehicles and then decrepit so, yeah. over time. Yeah. This, I had no idea. I don't, I'd never seen this rail bridge in my life. So I don't know. If anybody knows where this is, let us know. This also caught my attention. It caught my attention in terms of like, I'm surprised that the train didn't get pulled down by the collapsed part. Well, maybe it's it's a partial collapse. Mm -hmm. So the train is still being supported by this massive structure. So it's going to get pulled down once this collapses. Mm, sure. But maybe this is supported just enough. enough, just enough that it's, you know, it looks like it's barely hanging on. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And then also I think I think the train must have stopped there and then the bridge broke 
Because if it was, if the bridge broke first, yeah, this thing would have like crashed, like right. if it was moving. Yeah. And, and this looks like passenger rail. So these guys got stuck on on the bridge, and how are gotta, they going to get gotta, out? Got to walk out. Yeah. <laughs> the, the door is to the to your death. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Could have been like a panic situation where there was like a bunch of infected around the bridge. They're like, well, what do we do? Well, stop it on the bridge, and then stop they can't it. get to us. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. And then they all died from starvation or dehydration. That's fun. Okay. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so this part, this is when uh, Joel and Ellie are leaving the gas station after mm -hmm. siphoning. Mm -hmm. um, and Joel mentioned that these all these cars were lined up for this one gas station right here. Mm -hmm. And that a tank or some kind of plow plowed the cars out of the way. Hmm. It's kind of, it just, the line is so long for this tiny gas station way out in the middle of where are we? The Midwest somewhere? The Midwest somewhere. Yeah. Crazy. But I, he's, I, I think things like this have happened in non-apocalypse situations. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would find it also hard to believe that there's like appreciable gas in a lot of these people's cars because they're coming to the gas station because they're out of gas. Oh, so I think I think during pandemic times we saw people with full tanks going in, just going trying to in. hoard, just trying to get trying extra to tanks. Yeah. yeah. But eventually, people are going to be showing up to gas stations running on fumes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Not sure how that would go down. Hmm. This part, Ellie finds that porn magazine. Yeah. And she throws it out the window, and I was like, "Wait, whoa! Don't throw it out no. the window. That is worth something in the apocalypse. Yeah. You don't have the internet. You don't have." There's no publishers anymore. And you've got a porn mag. You could sell that. Jesus, I mean, dude. That's going to be I, worth I a was lot. thinking that this is excellent Tinder. Like you could you could use it to start a fire. But yeah, you're right. It, the data in the book, which is the pictures, like mm -hmm. you can't recreate those. Yeah. Yeah. This is an excellent barter item. Yeah. Because, you know, people would, I don't know, people would spend tons of money on this. Mm -hmm. And potentially in the future, we could recover enough technology to do cloning. And there's plenty of DNA left in that magazine. Maybe this person can come back to life. Well, didn't she was joking that the, the pages were stuck together. Right? Oh, I thought she was joking that she didn't know what it was from, but it definitely was stuck together. Oh, I thought she was saying they weren't stuck together and she was just well, joking. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe there is. <laughs> <laughs> do we don't we want to clone the people with the long pipes, not the people doing the long pipe to the long pipes I, what do you mean long pipe what is well, long big pipe? dicks oh dicks we're talking about this is dirty <laughs> <laughs> well it's a gay porn magazine right yeah yeah she oh we referenced... don't know the the person jacking off to this may have had a huge dong we don't know meaning we don't know we want i guess although they the would people... have overshot the magazine maybe it would have been too close for for a cockfire Either way, I think this porn magazine is worth more than throwing on the side of the road. I think Agreed. that's, you could take that Can to the town and, and get some serious resources for it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Can you imagine somebody like somebody else traveling across the country? They're like, pull over, pull over now. And they like find this magazine. They're like, oh my <laughs> gosh, <laughs> this is yeah. worth so much money. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't, I'd be so hard to spot, but if you did, that's a pullover. That's a pullover. Yeah. You get, you, no, there's nothing there. I was trying to say pull out. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so they're camping out in the openness area and Ellie has a light on because she's reading and they're on the ground in their sleeping bags. And I thought, is this the right place for them to sleep? Where should they sleep? Um, because the ground is cold. You really need separation from the ground to keep the ground from pulling body heat out of you. Um, I think I have some more pictures in here. And should they have lights discipline? Like, so as soon as the sun goes down, you also generate no light. Because here, even though the, the forest is wooded, like there's enough gaps in those trees where if anything that's bright stands out. And yeah, she sh just sh shouldn't be reading. Yeah, that so sounds they, terrible. That sounds terrible for me to say. To say like, like well, she shouldn't be reading. Read, read during the day. Read during the day. Yeah, plenty I of mean, hard time. Well, first off, my question was, she's like, Joel is like, no fire. And it's like, then there's like a bright lanterns out. Technically you know? not fire. What a teenager. <laughs> it's technically not fire, but the light discipline. 
yeah. right? There's no other lights on in town every, anywhere. So anywhere. somebody from really far away is going to hone in on that artificial light. Right. So there are then, no lights in the area. And then we include that this is like after the apocalypse, mm -hmm. like there's mm -hmm. extra no lights. Right. And what, what's the battery situation going on here? That's like, great. I, I mean, it's 20 it's years after rechargeable batteries, especially in the early 2000s, weren't exactly, they, were, they existed, but 20 years later. Yeah, no way. I think the battery situation is pretty poor. So they're pretty wasteful, I thought, with flashlights and lanterns. Even if you had like those crank flashlights, like there's still a battery in there. And will it be able to mm -hmm. maintain and hold, uh, will it be able to hold charge for mm -hmm. over that time? Like even if you crank it, like it, mm -hmm. it's still, mm -hmm. it's electrolytes are going to break down. Yeah. So I think this is like, if you're camping, when sundown, you're asleep. Yeah. Because the light's gone and you don't want to waste batteries and you don't want to have light broadcasting that you're around. Yeah. So Exactly. Mm -hmm. Should they be sleeping in the car? There's more pictures. So I thought so. Like, why do we have beds that are above the ground? Well, we don't really need it in a modern house, but we have beds above the ground. So creepy crawlies go underneath. Creepy crawlies, yeah. And you're separated from the cold ground. If, if you've ever camped without separation from the ground, the ground will suck a lot of heat out of you. It's very cold. Yeah. yeah. So there could be wintertime, which case there's no creepy crawlies, but then it's cold. Or it could be That's summertime and there's potential for rain there's also water moisture on the ground you know but then if it's summertime it's going to be warm but then you have creepy crawlies and wetness right so sleeping in yeah, the truck. so sleeping maybe not in the seats if it's too mm, upright posture if they don't have space for it although it is a two this is a two rows they could sleep like that or even mm -hmm. just in the bed pull down pull down the um the door, the back door of the truck, mm -hmm. and then sleep in the bed. Sure. The other thing is, if you make space for yourself in the bed of the truck, what if you need to egress rapidly? Now the cargo in the bed of the truck isn't properly secured, or it might be Ooh. on the ground, and your egress will be slow. So I guess I'm imagining your car is always ready to rock. Yeah. Like you just like shove things in, so that way you make enough space for you to sleep, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, you definitely can't put things on the ground. Right. It's tricky. So mm -hmm. maybe it is right. to If you sleep on the ground, it's an increased risk of different things. But the truck, if you ever hear anything or see anything, you can just jump in the truck and go. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I would, Okay, I know what I would do. If they had enough uh, string, <laughs> enough cordage, they make a little tent hanging off the back of the truck. They got a tarp right there. Oh, that's true. That's true. Hmm. post-apocalypse with me that light discipline Ugh. Yeah. yeah they had plenty of time to set up their camping stuff with the sunlight up mm -hmm. had pl had plenty of time don't wait until it's sundown yeah that's also just true of regular camping don't wait until it's sundown to set up a camp that's right yeah definitely don't hmm. oh so here's a coffee i was upset hmm. that there was dripping yeah don't overflow and over here doing, the, the sauce here mm-hmm uh, you know, calories are tough to come by. We need to eat all of it. Wash it down, baby. And I'm seeing this casual sauceness mm. going on here. Mm. You know, so I also, uh, so this picture, actually, Ellie has a piece of food fly out of her mouth. I was like, there's calories. It's calories. Oh, God. Ready? Yeah. Eating. Chef Boyardee ravioli. That guy is good. I actually agree. Wait, hold on. <laughs> What am I even eating? Chef Boyardee ravioli. That guy is good. Actually, oh, I, can't, I can't see it there, but she's so casual with her chewing. Yeah. You know, I want all of the calories in there. Like I get that. I get that this is like a feast for her and, mm -hmm. so, and it looks like there's so much, but given that life that she's always known of scarcity, like mm -hmm. she'd be very careful with food. Right. Licking the plate, licking the silverware, never wasting any sauce, mm -hmm. you know, so. What am I even eating? Very casual. Very casual. Good. I actually agree. What am I even eating? Chef Boyardee. Okay, enough of that. And then here's the dripping. Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you don't like coffee? So true. Yeah, so true. Look at the the dripping. Oh, it's dripping oof, in the spillage. Oof. Spillage. Spillage. That's just I mean, overfilling. In North America, you're not going to have access to coffee. 
right? Coffee right. is a tropical mountainous bean. Yep. So this isn't just, you know, a casual morning coffee. This is like, I'm going to appreciate this because I won't see That's it right. again. Maybe for my entire life. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, no dripping, please. <laughs> yeah. Also, the natural gas situation. I, you know, I'm seeing. It seems like got a little little propane bottle there. Yeah. Wouldn't you want a wood fire instead? Because that's available. You wouldn't want to waste your natural gas. Ooh, very good point. So the risk of wood fire is that you could smoke and you'd give away your position. However propane this is your last bottle like mm -hmm. once you're done with this you're done with it so like you would want to save your propane for a cold okay. wet night like i i can't get a fire going but i can get propane mm -hmm. running so maybe that means okay so they have meat i don't know how they're preserving that but i, I think you just eat the chef boyardee cold be worth it yeah hmm This part, this is, they're already to Kansas City. I could, I, I, st I still, so I have some talking points here. So they're in Kansas City. How long would that take? So I did a Google map of this. It's 1,400 to 1,500 miles, depending nice. on the route you take. So that's 700, 750 miles a day. Okay. Yeah. So that's like a um, 10 hour drive. If you're 70 full speed straight away. No right. stop for fuel. So you're on a, yeah, you're on apocalyptic roads without gas stations, right. without food stops. The roads are probably all uh, potholed, messed up. They got potholes, messed up. You don't know what you're going to encounter. So you're probably chugging along at 25, maybe, because hmm. you can't. You, one pothole hit too hard, and your axles are screwed. That's your right. Tire gets e messed up. Even if you pop a tire, now your car's gone. Right. Yeah. And do they have spares? I hope so. But then you're running on a spare. You have you spares that have been, but spares, for, even if you found an identical car that had been sitting out in the sun for 20 years, like that tire is mm -hmm. wrecked. That tire is wrecked. Absolutely. Yeah. So they're, well, they went the 70 route. So they're ripping down the freeway at 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour in the apocalypse. No rest stops, no gas stations. I Heck, think that's e too fast. Even if an infected comes out and you are like, whatever, I'm just going to hit it. Like, Hitting a body with your vehicle damages your vehicle. You, you need to go damages somewhat vehicle, slowly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's too and fast. And I think the more slowly you go, the fat, the farther you get on fuel. There's probably some. There, there's like maximum, an optimal but, speed, yeah. yeah. And it's probably, you know, you're looking at like 35, 30 miles an hour, something like that. I don't know. Um, but so then also you have to retrieve fuel. You know, you can't just stop at a gas station. It, even if there is plentiful fuel, you have to go retrieve it. That could take hours. And Ellie say, so, was saying that she had, they had to stop every hour. Yeah. Now, that may be some teenager exaggeration, but sure, two, three mm -hmm. hours, it's still yeah. stopping fairly frequently. Right. So she says it's the second day in her car. So they made it. I can't believe it. Wow. <laughs> All the way from Boston to Kansas City. If you go on Google Maps, I mean, what a distance. Yeah. So... Here's Boston, and there's Kansas City, and they're going this route. Zoom. Yep. Crazy. So I went into Kansas City, and I think I found where this point is. You madman. <laughs> so the, see this uh, this building that goes across the road here? Bye. Yep, that looks get like us, it. Get us down right here. I think this is it. New sign, and it's not quite the same. Um, this says Wichita 35 South and Des Moines 35 North. And this is Topeka, Wichita, this one we can't see. So it must be an this updated sign. might not be the same place then. There's no other place that makes sense. If you go... Um, you frequent like, def detective <laughs> man. So here, man. Here's, here's 35. So there has to be, you're coming this way. Mm -hmm. And you go 35 south to go to south yep. to uh, Wichita down here. That makes sense. And you go 35 north to Oh, I Des see Moines. what you're doing. Yeah, this this is the natural fork. That's the natural fork. Uh, not here because you're getting on 70. Um, and Yeah, and then you don't get the tunnel anywhere else except right here. 
I think they're like downtown, downtown Kansas City when they hit this. And maybe this is just an older sign. That would be a huh. cool detail. If if you look at the sign today. It's it, so obsessive. Uh, Gosh. If you look at the sign today, it says uh, this. But maybe back in 03, this sign was different. And it said mm. this. That would be incredible detail. <laughs> what a detail. Holy cow. Yeah, so I'm not sure. It doesn't quite I'm impressed. match. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's over here. But there's no signs anymore. Mm. I'm sure. So it's not quite a match. Maybe it's fictional. But I think this is where I think we're, they're at. So they got to downtown Kansas City from Boston in two days. Two days. Post, no scrapes, I mean, no bumps. Everything's working great. Yeah. I mean, what a, what, wow. What, what a trek. Short amount of time. Yeah. And then, oh, this map situation. First off, are they, are they, do they rotate this map? Yeah. He's the kind of person that like imagines themselves in the map and then they just always go straight. They rotate the map around. Oh gosh. Why would... Some people are like that. It mm -hmm. makes sense for them. Other people like keep the map still and imagine themselves rotating it in the map. Mm -hmm. Depends. Yeah, depends. But Ellie, they, they decide to do a diversion away from the blocked road and go into mm -hmm. downtown Kansas City, which, by the way, should they be avoiding the cities? That's right. Why don't you just take an outside loop around the city? Right. I mean, it's a slow going, but worth it, right? Because you avoid people. Right. So they decide to go through downtown they don't have a map meeting before going through downtown. That's right. And then Ellie's trying to read the map on the fly. Can't do it because she's not really done this before. And they get lost and then problems yeah. happen. She has no experience reading maps. Why would she? <laughs> I think it's worth taking the time to plan out the route, plan out contingencies, get Ellie up to speed right. on reading the map. That's right. Teach her how to then, read that. And then execute to just wing it through downtown. What? So here, here's, right. the, here's the clip. The fuck is the highway? I can't tell from this, I'm all turned around. Well, don't look at the state map, look at the inside. Well, I don't know where we are in that either. This is my second day in a fucking car, man. This transported like... me to my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. It's worth like she didn't even know like to look at the inset or not the inset or the state map or like what scale are we on? Now so we're in trouble. I, I think they should have traveled a bit slower, maybe taking two, maybe three more days. And during their downtime, Joel teaches Ellie how to read the map. Yeah. Well, maybe after when they're camping at night, you know, before the sun goes down. Exactly. Take the time and do some training. You could do gun training. You could do map mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. There's so many things to learn. She's still a kid, yeah. right? Still so, a kid. She's 14. School yeah. time. Yeah. And it Less can be time, yeah. all based around survival. So what, what yeah. would we do if we got to if we got to Kansas City? What would we do? We're, we're downtown Kansas City. We can't get through. Oh, cool. What so can we, we, can we, instead of looking at the service streets, can we look at the, the highways? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're sitting down here somewhere. Well, first thing is avoid the city entirely. So how far away from the city center will we get until we get, we, we, came, we came in on 70, is that right? Yeah, we came in on 70. I might take 291 over there in the east. So you come over here, you, so you, you turn you turn tail and go. Yeah, first first tail. you check the Costco there. <laughs> oh, Actually, absolutely, the, yeah. Always check the Costco. Yeah. And then so I would go So you go 291 north. up here. Exactly. Just avoid the city entirely. Do you go 210? I might even go city, further up. Then you go up to 291. I mean, you're heading yep. north towards Wyoming. Okay, anyway, yeah, perfect, two, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Take 152. 150, yeah. Bam, yeah. second Costco. Check the Costco. Second Costco. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the apocalypse, I'm just driving to Costco's. Yeah. <laughs> just every Costco I can. Then you hit two, 152, and then you hit north on 435. Sure. And you continue probably up 29 and then head on 80. Yeah, because there's no t big towns between here and Omaha. Just avoid so the cities clear. as much as you can. Yeah, so I we I don't think we would have gotten in this situation where we're downtown. We would have sit on 291 or even further out, planned it out, and gone around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. I mean, it just it it's 
reasonable that if there are any survivors, they would set up bases in the cities and and they would have a radius around them, which they protect. That's that's their zone. Yeah. So I would just want to skirt around the outside of their bubble. That's right. So you kind of want to you want to be near things so you can scavenge, but you don't want to be too near things where you run into humans that are going to kill you. Yeah. So I guess any sources of water like streams, people are going to mm -hmm. be likely along those. That's true. So you need to plan your water getting situation pretty carefully. Mm -hmm. hmm. Ellie says stop. And then Joel, instead of easing to a stop. Well, we'll see. Stop. Like, whoa, easy on the brakes. Easy he didn't on even the car. look. <laughs> he just, he's looking off to the side. She's like, stop. He's like, okay, slam. Slam. But this is a, at least it's, it's more than a 20 year old vehicle, mm. but you don't have, you go easy on it. Just yeah. slower Especially down. If, if this is your one vehicle that's going to get you across the country, don't take any risks. Right. Don't take any risks. Be gentle with your car. Look at this. Stop. Look at this slam on the brakes. Whoa. Whoa. Hmm. Steady on. Okay. I thought that was just, you know, in a scenario of lack of abundance, you know. That's right. You got to be careful with everything. Yeah. Minimal wear. Ooh, they got pinned down. I didn't know. What, what do you do in this situation? That's a good question. So you could try. So my first thought was you have the, the truck between them and you so you have some cover temporarily mm -hmm. so maybe throw out a distraction grab something and throw it like a grenade mm. they at least make to, them think about it make, make them think about it and then head away from them but stay behind the vehicle mm. um, now Help, ellie was they... able to get through the hole in the wall but maybe when she gets through the hole in the wall you can figure out how to get joel through um yeah but use the truck as cover and head backwards um, what do you think? What, what would you do? My first thought, which applies to both people, is try to shoot the other team from underneath the car. Because, mm -hmm. like, they, yeah, both of them, they both sets of people try to shoot over their vehicles, but their feet are exposed and mm -hmm. they're not looking. They do. They don't even have the angle to be able to see if the other person is looking underneath their car. So while it wouldn't be a kill shot, you could fuck up their legs and that's going to mm -hmm. mess them up in terms of battle. Mm -hmm. um, I really like what you said about running away. I, I mean, from this picture's perspective, it would be just right towards us because then the other team, they can't see that you're running away. All they see is the car is still there. That's right. And actually, I was less worried about firing under the vehicle and more worried about them firing at me under the vehicle. So yeah, I wanted so to stay behind only the tire. You know. exactly the only safe spot is behind the tire because that's where they can't see you right and also the another thing is you're in a limited ammo environment you can't really lay down covering fire or just take pot shots like every bullet counts mm -hmm. um so do you even want to fire back you got to go outside the city. You just, you, you just, it'd be so important to avoid any situation like this. Yeah. You got to hit them Costco's on the outside of the city. Right. So, but so, so you are in this situation. Do you want to fire back? Okay. Okay. So we're already in the situation for sure. What do you do? I think run away if possible is step one. You might need to bait them with a surrender and then actually not. But if you white bait, flag, they're just going to kill you up. with a with a surrender, right? White white flag comes up. You get them to leave the cover, then you shoot. You, you at least get one person. Yeah. So I think what so this is throw in psychological games, do things right, that are right. unforeseen, do behaviors that are tricky, so they can't trust you. Mm. Get them off their focus, and then get out of there. Right. Which means either kill them, like you said, distract them, and then get an opportunity. Or use a distraction to get away. Oh, there is a back door in this laundromat, right? Yeah. But maybe but it, it's in sight of them. Maybe you make you could make a break for it. But it's it's um you don't know if it can open. I think later Ellie True. takes the there's like a desk in the Oh, way. that's that's the next room over. Oh, I thought that I'm, was I'm, 
that, yeah, that's like the next door. Um, in the same room, the Brian attacks um, Joel. He comes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I so see. there is a back door, but maybe that back door is in view of these two guys that are behind their truck shooting. I see. Yeah, but I mean, what, oh, I guess if you you if if it is in view and you don't, but you don't know if it's in view or not, you get the door open right. and then make a break for it. Expose yourself yeah. as little as possible. And get out of there. Yeah, I guess yo, ooh, it's so risky because what if there's other there are bad guys on the other side of the door and now you're exposed, but you don't you that's an that's a maybe exposed whereas these guys you, you know for sure you're exposed, yeah, and you can't mm. stay here for long because so they'll just close so, in. You're gonna have to take a chance. There's no guarantee that they only have two people. They could be waiting for a third or a fourth to just creep in on you. So in that case, speed is of the essence. If they're not in position yet, you need to get out of there before they can set up something. Right. So it's got to be could, fast. They could uh, throw a torch in there and smoke you out. You really got to decide quickly. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah. What that's... do you do here? This is the kind of scenario where you kind of have to. You have to be on the same page and Sorry. act quickly. You have to do mental reps. You have to do physical reps and think through scenarios and be able to work as a team. I mean, it's oh, so hard. They get out of it. They get out of it, but it was touch and go. Oh, yeah. So, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Joel gets attacked by this guy. You actually mm-hmm. knew his name. What's his name? Brian. His Brian. name's Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I was just like a nameless henchman of the soccer mom gang, and yeah, he gets Joel. You know, Joel's pinned to the pinned. floor. He gets him, and then Ellie comes up behind and shoots Dude, Brian. To, gets to execute him. him. Yep. And then she shoots him in like the side. Yeah. Well, I guess she got his spine. Well, that's right. She hits his spine because his legs don't work anymore right and i guess he doesn't even feel it or maybe he's in shock or something but yeah yeah his legs don't work anymore yeah it's his legs don't work anymore and here he is begging for his life <sighs> trying to deal i mean he's trying to especially trying to deal with joel who he was just about to kill like right and he's gonna die anyway i mean there's no right. hospitals you know right right so you Key know. point in this is that she spent one round, so she has nine plus one max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is so after they escape the this the terrible situation, they're able to kill both henchmen plus Brian. So they killed yeah, three right. guys. Yep. They're able to escape before the soccer mom gang can close in. And so they're running around the city sneaking around. And I was like, what are you slamming doors for? Ready? Ooh, gentle. I was, like, you, I was like, you just, you you close it, click, and then you go on. Right. Because somebody could hear, there's no noise in the city. Right. People are listening and you hear slam. You're like, well, I'm going that way. Even if they're not intentionally listening, they're just passively listening. Right. Like you hear slam. Like, what? What is what, that? What is that? Check it out. And if, if there's somewhere, you know, there's all these alleyways, you know, they could be yeah. anywhere yeah. in here. You don't know. Right. And a lot of people are going to, the sound is going to resonate, not resonate, but like get focused through these building canyons in some respect. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, I thought that was a mistake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She needs a gentle that. And the exception is if you, if they already know where you are, then yeah, close the door, get security. But, but if they don't know where you are, maintain that. That's a huge advantage. Right. Huge advantage. Cause they're looking for you or you assume they're looking for you. If they don't know where you are, Keep it that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this was a henchman mm. in the soccer mom gang. Helmet not strapped up. Buckle your helmet. Why not? Yeah, amateur. Who, who, who are you looking cool for? That helmet yeah, does nothing if you trip and then it falls off. It falls off. Yeah. Keep it secure. And then I was like, these these guys' gloves. Look at this. It's such great Ooh, shape. Good shape. Amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, it's, it's, I mean, it suggests that he actually doesn't use them often. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. 20 years of glove use. Maybe they have like a Costco with a bunch of clothes in it that they only distribute mm-hmm. the gloves to people who are of a certain stature because these are in great oh, shape. Oh, high rank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He got the sniper skills. He gets the gloves. Yeah, gets the gloves. Also, his optic is battery powered. Oh, it is? Oh, it might just again. be for show at this point. <laughs> yeah, it might be. 
I did not know. Hmm. Oh yeah, this part, this is trucks. So many gas guzzling <gasps> trucks. They had so many resources. Yeah. Soccer mom game gang is killing it. Like, killing it. I mean, these are not, those are not fuel efficient vehicles. I mean, right. they just have stores and stores of gasoline somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have an ethanol still. I don't know mm. if these, are, you know, but they've, they're organized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, amazing. They got them, the super reliable Toyotas. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Ah, this is, this is right after Joel gives her the gun back. So, so mm -hmm. he's decided now like, yeah, it's worth it. She's <laughs> effectively <laughs> lost her innocence. Like fine, get her gun. And she's very happy. She's holding this gun. And then she takes it. Uh, he, he says, put it in her backpack mm -hmm. and she takes it and she pockets it. So first of all, <laughs> teenage rebellion, come on. Like, <laughs> like Joel gives you one instruction, put it in the bag. And you're like, mm, mm -hmm. no, but also <laughs> super smart, super smart that like, you know, keep it at the ready. Mm -hmm. But she's super happy and, and her situation didn't actually change. Like she already had a gun before, but now she has Joel's approval. And so approval. she's super happy. Like, yeah, that, that's a little, little insight in their relationship. Yeah. When, uh, when Joel was teaching her how to use the gun, I was like muzzle control. Oh no. I was so Ooh. scared. Ready? Oh, oh she's pointing right at him. Oh, she's Let's flagging him. Oh my and she's God. like, Squeezes he's like jiggling it just in case of it? accident. Oh, it's so close. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just do it slightly to the oh. side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, 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 the tug was hilarious. It's like if you want an accidental trigger pull, tug. That's how I do it. <laughs> she's so happy though. And she's so happy. Imagine if he just collapsed right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's so happy and then bam, and then bam. he's dead. Joel, what do I do? Joel. That's Joel's fault, though. He That's needs Joel's to. Fault. First thing is know where you're pointing at all times. Oh, yeah. And this part, I was so upset with Joel's. First off, Joel's um, procedures for opening doors are suspect. He makes too much noise and he opens them without doing a, a spot check outside. He also made a dad joke that I think nobody noticed. You ready? Wait, what? Ready? So we're looking for bad door check, too much noise, and dad joke. Ready? We'll get through this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Joel, laying him down. <laughs> That's not what he meant. <laughs> uh, but there's a willy-nilly opening of the door. It'd be amazing if he like paused right then and looked at Ellie and was like, hey, hey. <laughs> we'll get through this. Hey. <laughs> like, like he only makes, they both make dad jokes, but he only makes them in like tense, dire situations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect guy. <laughs> like, get on my level, Ellie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, they were like, I'm going to, I'm going to, Joel said, um, we'll just leave when the truck sounds stop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? How? What? what? Really? That's not a guarantee that it's, that's a, that's a suggestion that the truck is not out there. It could be off right. or there could be foot people there. I mean, assuming you don't have a lot of fuel, you're going to take the people, put them in the truck, run the truck to the neighborhood, park it, turn it off and then fan right. out. Right. So the truck's going to be off and you're going to go into henchman territory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the joke was worth it. So they're going to get through this. <laughs> Oh yeah, this part. So Joel and Ellie are sneaking an event into a high rise to to hide for the night. Where is all this light coming from? Does the does the does the soccer mom gang have power? I guess they must. Right. I see light up here. That's right. I see illumination here. And this that's that's Various an go ahead. that's a demonstration of how important it is for light discipline. Because up in that office building on the mm -hmm. top right is just immediately someone there. Because why would why would there ever be lights on in this? That's right. Yeah. In a place without lights and power being abundant, it's going to be super obvious where there is power. So I guess if you did have abundant light and power, you could turn on some decoy lights if you have enough light to enough power to not care. 
Maybe this is what the soccer mom gang is doing. They're turning on a bunch of decoy lights Maybe. so people can't track them down and then they can run power. If they have that kind of abundance, it might be a smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I was so mad at Joel and Ellie here because they were going up stairwells. First off, two flashlights. You only use one for battery right. power. Right. Only battery power also, if people see it, it only looks like there's one person. Right. Then you're you're and then they're going up the stairwell. So first off, if you shine it up the stairwell, everybody who's in the stairwell can see you. That's right. Um, and then they're like clonk 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 uh, up the clonk. stairwell. So people are listening in the building for newcomers. Um, so here I have a clip here. Uh, do I hold on? Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Uh, yeah, flashlight and footsteps. Here we go. Oh, no. Shine all the way up top. Shining all the way up. Two flashlights. No light discipline. Footstep discipline. Just footfalls are echoing up and down the stairwell. Anyone that's in the hallway, when they, they like out of the corner of their eye, they could see the flashlights flash mm -hmm. and be like, oh, what is that going on there? Yeah. I'll just look down the stairwell. I have plenty of time for them to slowly come up mm -hmm. mm. so i think right you can't have i think actually almost you can't have the flashlights on right and then you have to go slowly just in case there's any debris on the that's on right because what if what if somebody else put glass yeah then you would have crunched it right so you got to take one step at a time make no noise maybe Bring you're only broom. getting up to the fourth or fifth floor for safety because mm. They're just broadcasting to everybody in this building that they're coming. That's right. And showing off, they, I've got they two might as well be, and I don't care. They might as well literally be yelling, like, I'm coming mm -hmm. up the stairwell. Up the stairwell. So everybody can hear. Yeah. Yeah, I was mad at him. Ah, yes. So Joel lays down some glass. He lays down glass so that if somebody creeps up on them, you hear crunch, 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 and he wakes up. But shouldn't the glass be on the outside of that door? Because at the point where somebody's stepping on the glass, like they're already in the room with you. That's right. So you're they're in the room. You wake up and then you're dead. Yeah, you're like I got I got a little bit of warning, but they're like they got a gun on you already. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so my question was: in this floor, this room, did they clear it? They cleared it for sure. They must have. Otherwise, yeah, they must have. Gone, I mean, by clear, you mean went into every room on the floor and was like, nobody here? Check it out, I'm sure. Yeah. And then definitely in the apartment or whatever they're in, they went, they did a thorough check around the apartment to make sure there's only one entryway. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I guess every, every like it's a building code. Every, every facility, every room, every room, like every bedroom must have mm -hmm. a ingress mm -hmm. and egress. Yeah. So, so this apartment as a whole will have this front door but also mm -hmm. they should have like a an escape ladder somewhere yeah so which i guess is how they the the bad guys get in yeah so these guys we don't know if they're bad yet but this i think it's a father and a son father son yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 they must have come in through a different way or known the glass was probable and knew how to deal with it mm -hmm. I, I thought that maybe it's not a good idea for joel and ellie to sleep at the same time or, you know, yeah. one sleep, one on watch, just, just listening. Yeah. Just listening. But man, that would be so difficult to not fall asleep. <laughs> I think it would be difficult to not fall asleep, but with gotta practice, you got to make it work. Gotta make it work. Yeah. I did this trick back in undergrad. So mm -hmm. stupid. I'd fall asleep in class all the time. I'd hold the water bottle that was like three quarters full. And so then if I started to sleep, like the water bottle would tip and that would wake me up. <laughs> Not work. Hey, that's... I mean, funny, but like pro tip to anyone that's got to survive out in the wilderness, hold on to a water bottle. Yeah. Also, if your life is on the line every day and you got to stay awake, you might maybe get you burnt gotta, out. You get burnt out and maybe you conk out. Yeah. But then it needs to be communicated. You know, if you have good communication, be like, hey, this tonight I'm dead tired. Mm hmm. Not going to happen. My watch isn't. Maybe you don't necessarily need to not sleep at the same time, but you minimize the overlap. Go ahead. 
Well, it's my my water bottle or maybe my jacket is tied to your foot. So if I fall asleep, it pulls on you. Hey. Hey. Okay. Situational awareness mm-hmm. by like by like not by administrative controls, but by by engineering controls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what got me about this picture? Was they they fancy themselves as mm-hmm. like superior, or at least the sun does, but mm-hmm. all I see is Raphael. <laughs> yeah, like, <that's> <laughs> like can we can we get those pictures up at the same time? Yeah, so you see it, right? I see it. Like yep. yeah, I mean actually, if there is yeah. comic books, you know, graphic novels or whatever sitting around, and he, you know, this this kid has nothing to read or do, mm-hmm. he has limited access to pop culture or whatever and all he has is a comic book and that's his hero mm-hmm. from the comic book that's what he dresses up as makes sense maybe mm-hmm. he's a fan yeah and also from the father's perspective like this is a good way to keep the kid mentally engaged and not mm-hmm. thinking about like the harshness of the world like you teach him comic mm-hmm. book stuff and if he ends up liking Raphael, like all right yeah, and you know what? He could draw allegories from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ooh. into real life where the dad is Splinter oh. and he's one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles learning the ropes. Learning the ropes, but his his uh, three siblings also died. So that's why it's super important for him to be you know have operational awareness. That's right. Okay. okay. So their ninja skills are really good. Yeah. So somewhere out there on the road, somewhere is some kid learning how to be a superhero with that, like the the magazine that was left on the road that's right okay but he, he always feels inadequate yep and that's the end of the episode <laughs> that, that, that's where we end it <laughs> see you guys next time for season time. one episode five the last of us